All right, well, welcome back to Cross Current TV. My name is Chris Cravens. So today's segment is going to be about uh, safe wading and river crossing. I often see a lot of inefficient wading, and it just kind of taps people out, and it increases their odds for kind of slipping and falling and losing gear and getting wet. Our main prerogative for being outside anytime is staying safe, warm, and dry. And, uh, and you can do that by reading water and crossing rivers very deliberately. Well, there's a lot of equipment out there that has come out recently that really kind of helps us out with wading safely. One of the biggest determinants, of course, is your waders. You've got hip waders, chest waders, and then kind of somewhere in between there. Generally speaking, I think everyone should fish in, in chest waders. It gives you a little bit more cushion. If you do take a slip in a fall, you're not going to get a bunch of water down your waders. Um, the new breathable Gore-Tex type materials are very, very safe. When you kind of get deep, they end up sucking close to your body. Whereas the old canvas waders that our grandfathers and uh, dads owned, which are still around in the garages, are at kind of death traps actually. Instead of sucking tight, those old canvas waders actually fill with water and they'll sink you like a rock. Wading belts are really important, of course. They also uh, help eliminate a lot of water getting down your waders. In addition to your waders, of course, comes your footwear. You've kind of got two options with um, the sole. One is felt and the other one is a, a rubber grippy sole. Both of them have pluses and minuses and you can get both of them in studs or unstudded. Studs, of course, help on slip slippery rocks, uh, but I'm not going to let you in my drift boat or in my airplane if you got them on. On a side note, Alaska's banning felt sold wading boots. Another good piece of equipment and probably one of the more important ones are polarized glasses. Just like they are super important in fishing and being able to see fish and read water, they're probably more paramount in safe river crossing, okay? So you can see the bottom, the topography layout as you cross. Wading staffs are good for stability. They kind of offer a tripod type uh, support as you cross. They also uh, are a good depth gauge indicator. So before you kind of commit to walking into a deep hole in murky water, if you don't have a wading staff and you need one in a pinch, you can grab, of course, a stick off the bank and use that. Next, we're going to kind of go into uh, generalized approaches to crossing rivers. We'll start out with kind of the layout of a river. You know, you've got uh, distinct pools, which are or deeper runs and, and, and holding water, which you kind of want to stay out of one because fish hold in there and two, they're very deep to cross in. So we'll start from the very top. So you can see the very head of the run, which are the white riffles coming down, dumping in with fast velocity into the, the main run. All of a sudden your current speed slows down. This is the main bulk or the meat of your glide run. And then it ends up where it widens out and it shallows out into the tail of the run indicated by the small riffles down there. And generally speaking, the tail outs of these runs where they are shallower um, and a little bit more riffled are, again, generally speaking, the safest places to uh, approach a river crossing. You should be paying attention to all these characteristics of the river when you're fishing and wading. This is Lisa Mora. She's one of our producers from the first movie, uh, Cast Alaska. Hello. And uh, we're going to take some of the things that we've talked about already today and put them into application and find a good safe spot to wade. A lot of times people just try to aim directly across the river when they try to wade. Or sometimes they even fight the current and go upstream. Exactly what you don't want to do. Use the river current to your advantage. If you want to cross to a spot, look at it, start way high, and then angle your way down. The other thing you can do, especially when you're fishing together uh, with a group or with another person, is that you can use a two-person approach a method. Um, kind of stay hand in hand or lock arms like this. Again, staying very high, well above the point that you want to reach at the other end of the river. And I'll stay just slightly upstream of them. And I'm kind of helping the person below me break the, the river current and uh, also giving them a little bit of an assistance, you know, if they lose their footing or whatnot. Alright, so those are kind of the basics about um, general approaches to uh, safe river crossing and wading. Uh, remember that, you know, every time we wade and we're just around water, um, we end up figuring out a lot about the river. So every little bit that you learn from wading will apply to your fly fishing as well. Reading water is reading water. You know, take a moment to observe sometimes when you're watching uh, the rocks and the topography below you. You'll see a lot of things that you wouldn't normally see unless you're right on them. Wade slow, wade quiet, take the time to look and observe, and uh, your day is going to go a lot smoother and you're going to get a lot more out of it. Thanks uh, a lot for being here and listening, and uh, we'll see you next time on Cross Current TV. At Cross Current TV, we want to hear from you. We'll take your questions and ideas posted to our Facebook or YouTube pages 
and use them for future episodes. And click here to check out the trailer for our first fly fishing adventure movie, Cast Alaska, available now on DVD. Thank you.